New to the world of highly prized and sought after morel mushrooms, having never tasted, held, or even seen one, in a matter of five days, Baron and I managed to forage, cook, and dehydrate dozens of morel mushrooms here in the dry climate of Central Oregon. Morel season occurs in the spring through April, May, and even June, depending on your region. Wow, they're in great shape. Like, these are super fresh. They grow across the United States, come in a few varieties, and are some of the most prized edible mushrooms in North America. No way. We're gonna have our work cut out for us tonight. Growing up in the Midwest, we were familiar with yellow morels. A lot of friends and family have hunted morels for years. Though our interest in mushroom hunting didn't begin until our time in Colorado, hunting bolete and puffball mushrooms. Definitely a western puffball. A truck had been parking around the scamp for three days in a row. Baron saw him, talked to the guy, and learned that he was foraging morel mushrooms. Jordan was his name. He said he hadn't had any luck, but on the fourth day, he came back to his truck with a bag full of morels. He then did two holy things. First, he gave us about a dozen morels, and mind you, that same amount of morels is going for about $15 in town right now. And second, he gave us general directions as to how to find the spot that he found the morels. That is so taboo that I'm still in disbelief, right? Yeah. Jordan, thank you. You're a stranger we may never see again, and you're the reason for all of this. We cooked Jordan's morels in the commonly recommended butter and garlic with a little salt. Oh my goodness, it smells so good. Oh my goodness. It's delicious. What have we been doing all our lives? Mm. We ate every last bit of those delectable morels and immediately geared up to search for our own. This is amazing. In our experience, which was zero, we knew the morels would be growing in burned areas. They're out here somewhere. Jordan said they liked the manzanita shrubs and that they should be popping through the pine needles. But without ever having seen one in the wild, we really didn't know what to look for. Camp has given up. He won't move. It's been like 15 minutes of walking. Come on, Camp. Hey, come on, little forest fairy. We're still in the same spot. Camp won't move. Oh, that's a good spot. Yeah. I found one. It's very humble, Morel. Look how random of a spot. Flip over. I didn't do anything. I just looked at it and found it. And it, it requires us walking very slowly, it seems. Because I was kind of walking through and, oh, they'll pop up. But very obviously, they are extremely camouflaged. Well. There's another one. <gasps> Look at it. We did it. Ooh, that's a good one. I'm happy now. Me too. Camp, this is what we're looking for. Keep searching, you're doing great. Oh, a really good one. I found the secret. What? You gotta have a fanny pack and a stick and then they just show up. Ha <laughs> ha! Now we do this! Okay, we did not step anywhere. <gasps> another, 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 there's two! Woo! Girl. Oh, there's another one. Woo! 
I can't help but shop for joy. <gasps> ah! It was a great success for our very first time. We're gonna head back and get some food and heck, I wanna find more. Cooking up the morels. We just cut them in half to make sure they weren't buggy and so that they cooked through and now we cooking them. A couple of them were buggy, but we're eating them anyway, or I am. My hot body, I'll do what I want. No, we did not wash these, or any of the morels on the first day. Eating dirt is not a big deal, and as for the bugs, I mean, yeah, there are some bugs. We cut the morels in half to clear out anything visible, tossed the ones with a bunch of holes, but beyond that, we were working with a fungus that grew out of the ground, so bugs are part of the process. Stick around though, later in the video we do clean some of the morels. They have no mushroom flavor. It's not like a... I don't Shiitake know. They have that like uh, umami sort of. Well, they're so good. We gotta find more. Should I pull them? Yeah. We're heading back out. Only this time we have our forest friend Trevor who met up with us a couple videos ago. The reason we hung out with Trevor the very first time was actually to find morel mushrooms. But we didn't, did we? No. No, <laughs> no that was an epic fail. So we're trying again today. Found one already. We just got to our spot. I'm gonna cut it, okay? Yep. He's nice and juicy too. There you go. Surprised you didn't know that we were professional foragers. Look at that! Thank you. That is a pretty Good one. Fine. He was deep in that plant. Yeah. Yeah, I'd say this is the biggest one we found so far. Dang. A little dry. It's okay. Oh. You find another? Hey! All right. Oh my goodness. Ooh. Wow. Oh my gosh. That's amazing. Yes, that we're doing awesome. it. it. Smells good. How beautiful. There's it's so dark too. It's good. Woody. Well, we find ourselves in a different kind of terrain. Not morel type terrain it seems. So I think that we are calling it a day. Show me the stash. Wow. Now that I am an expert in catching morels, I don't know if we explained it before, but mor <laughs> I have dirt everywhere. You're looking good. Mm. Smell them now. They smell more, way more mushroomy than they taste, I think. I have the Big Daddy set aside. I don't know, to make a necklace out of or something. Mm, the flavor profile of a morel mushroom is buttery, salty, <laughs> because we cook them in butter and salt. <laughs> we should cook a few of them without butter or salt and just see what it's like. Yeah, good idea. Look at that beautiful gem. Cut it into four slices since he's so big. Dang. You get one of a kind treatment. We have so many mushrooms. Yeah, that's a lot of mushrooms. Excellent. Let's cook them up. Yeah. I'm gonna cook a couple of them just straight, okay. like as unflavored as I can, just so that we can try them out. They're salty. Yeah, well there was a little bit of salt in them. Oh yeah, but they're like, they're like, when they're not cooked in oil and salt or anything, they, they have like a really woody, salty, they still have that umami like... It tastes like fish. 
It's got the consistency of fish. Mm -hmm. It's like a white flesh, like chicken. Mm -hmm. Yeah, white white meat. Yep, mm -hmm. chicken, uh, fish. Somehow we'll leave some in and see how, what the difference is, what you like. Oh, no. Good. oh dude. The smile on your face has to <laughs> explain like the joy that you get. Man, that was a satisfying dinner. Get out of here. Way to go, team. I think self so, bad. Hi. Welcome back to YouTube with the Foraging Master, Elsa Ray. We <laughs> find ourselves in the woods, again looking for morels, and what did I happen to stumble upon? A morel. A morel. Well, it's hard to see. But, like I said, I'm a foraging master. He was exposed. I just saw him with my own two eyes. We still know just as little as we knew two days ago about foraging morels, but it's still oh. prime time. <gasps> you find no, one? No, 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 no. Oh, dang. I found one of those rubber Here he is. fungi. Okay, we're on them. But in fact, we were not on them. We hiked around the woods for two hours looking for any sign of morels. Our strategy for finding them and any other wild mushroom is simple. When we find one, we look around. We observe the tree it's under. Is the earth moist or dry? Is it hiding under another plant? Or is it out in the open? If the first found mushroom is old and dry, we likely need to go up in elevation. If it's fresh and itty bitty, we may be a little early. We take these clues and as we walk around the forest, we look for similar terrain. Sometimes we never find that first mushroom. And sometimes, after searching for hours with no luck, just as we're about to quit, one makes an appearance and the hunt is on. Another good, good one. Wow. Oh, here's one. Big Daddy. Big oh, Daddy. Nice. Oh, here's one. Here's two. Here's three. Oh my god. He was trying so hard to push through. Oh. We'll help you. Got four more right here. You see how hard these are to find? One, two, three, four. And from up here, how in the world? Two. How happy are you? I this is like the most satisfying thing I've ever done. Actually, right? Oh yeah, I uh, thousand percent. We ain't done yet. I still don't see it. Okay, well, look harder. Can you see it, YouTube? Oh, okay. We didn't bring camp this time because he's not a big fan. He would prefer to go on a short walk to wherever he would like and then lay in the scamp until his dinner's ready. We didn't anticipate finding as many mushrooms as we did, and surely didn't anticipate finding so many that we would have to preserve them. 
These mushrooms were at the end of their prime and a little dry, but that wouldn't stop us from keeping them. There's a ton of information out there on how to clean and dry morels, but we couldn't access any of it because we didn't have any cell service. We have experience dehydrating bolete mushrooms, so kind of use the same method given all the tools and weather we had available. We first cut the mushrooms in half, inspecting them for obvious bugs, and set them into two piles. The first pile being mushrooms with more evidence of bugs that we could cook and eat that evening. The second pile being clean and relatively bug-free that we'd dehydrate. I began paying too close attention to the bugs, so we decided to switch. We. I decided to switch. We gave each pile a quick dip in a salt bath to remove any sediment and tiny bugs. Then a rinse with clean water and then laid them out on towels for a brief period to dry. Pile number one went onto the stove with ghee, fresh garlic and a sprinkle of salt. Mm. What a disgusting meal to 18-year-old Elsa. Sauerkraut and cooked mushrooms. Mm. After feasting, it was time to hang pile number two, using a simple needle and thread. It's like um, stringing popcorn for Christmas. Why would you ever do that? For your tree. Oh. Maybe those traditions were made before Walmart ornaments were made. Our wood stove was the perfect tool for the beginning stages of dehydration. The heat from burning wood pulls moisture from the air, exactly what we needed to dry these mushrooms. One end of each string, and we doubled up the string so it has a loop on either end. We have one end of each around our coat rack and then over here we tied rubber bands to hold them in place and then put a clip just so they don't slip off and then we banded this guy down too so hopefully this will work great I think it will two fans down here blowing we have the eco fan on top and then the heat from the stove so hopefully it's all <laughs> yeah. dehydrating I think this will be great. Oh, cool. The next day we left the mushrooms on the dash of our sunny car. If you've never tried this before, it's actually a great method of dehydration for all kinds of things, mimicking the low heat setting of an oven. On the third day, the mushrooms were definitely dry, but we left them in the sun to hang for a few hours just to be safe. The fan was keeping the flies from landing on them. If there's any squish in your morels, you'll want to continue to dehydrate. When they snap hard like this, they're done. We stored them in a glass jar, best kept in a cool, dark place, and they'll last us up to six months. But, yeah, right. That's amazing. We've caught several more pounds of morels since posting this video, and even some bolites. To learn how we rehydrate and cook these mushrooms, you're gonna have to stay tuned. We really hope you enjoyed this video. Happy hunting and we'll see you in the next one.